Good day. My name is Ronal Ferreira. I'm one of the editors of Opening Eyes, Volume 1, Understanding Education for the Visually Impaired. I'm a professor in the Department of Educational Psychology at the University of Pretoria. In this presentation, I would like to introduce the publication to you on behalf of my co-editor, Professor Maximus Monaheng Safotu, and myself. The fact that you decided to view this specific presentation provides an indication of your interest in the field of visual impairment, which is most certainly a field that requires ongoing research and capacity development. More specifically, despite the prevalence of visual impairment being high in South Africa, the existing body of knowledge in this field is limited. Similarly, even though the South African White Paper 6 on Inclusive Education came into effect more than a decade ago, some teachers still seem hesitant to accommodate learners with special needs in all schools, such as those with visual impairment. Against this background, the University of Pretoria embarked on a large-scale project in 2017 with a focus in this specific field. The project was funded by the Department of Higher Education and Training through the financial support of the European Union. As part of the project that the University of Pretoria undertook, research was conducted in terms of teachers' understanding of inclusive education policy and the implementation thereof, teachers' understanding of learners with visual impairment and what the teaching of these learners implies, teachers' needs and expectations in terms of the knowledge, skills and resources required to implement inclusive education in all schools, and teachers as well as expert stakeholders' views on suitable content for a postgraduate teacher qualification in the field of visual impairment. For the project, 252 teachers from 17 schools in five provinces throughout South Africa as well as 43 expert stakeholders in the fields of visual impairment participated. Based on the research project, an advanced diploma in visual impairment studies was developed, in addition to the Opening Eyes series, thereby resulting in groundbreaking work in South Africa. A particular strength of this publication lies in the authors that contributed chapters. Special care was taken to put a team together that would represent expertise by involving leaders in the specialized field of visual impairment. As such, in addition to the said research project informing the chapters of this and the other volumes in this series, the authors relied on their own research over years of practice. As a result, the discussions included in the chapters are enriched with case studies allowing for theory building, but more importantly, for the practical application of what is presented in this manner. The Opening Eyes volume series makes a significant contribution to the existing knowledge base on the implementation of inclusive education policy, more specifically within the context of quality education provision to learners with visual impairment. In this first volume of Opening Eyes, titled Understanding Education for the Visually Impaired, the focus falls on general support provision to learners with visual impairment against the background of inclusive education and equal opportunities to all learners. Based on the focus of this volume, it paves the way for related topics that are included in the subsequent volumes of the Opening Eyes series. The aim of opening the eyes and broadening the lens of peers and practitioners in the neglected field of study can ultimately strengthen equitably access to the world for learners with visual impairment. As such, the ultimate aim with this compilation of work remains improved levels of support and the inclusion of learners with visual impairment in society in order for them to function optimally despite their impairment. I would now like to provide you with an overview of the chapters of the first volume of the Opening Eyes series, which are clustered into three sections. In the first section of the book, we contextualize visual impairment. In the second section, we unpack support for learners with visual impairment. And in the third and final section, 
the focus falls on support beyond the school and classroom. So let's have a look at the chapters in a bit more detail. Chapter one is titled Visual Impairment as a Disability and or Diversity. In this chapter, Dr. Tony Mays of the Commonwealth of Learning in Vancouver, Canada, discusses the concept visual impairment as applied in the chapters and volumes to follow. In addition to introducing the spectrum of visual impairment, the tone is set for viewing disability from a strength-based stance where all learners are taking as able to learn. Expansion of the core curriculum is contemplated and the idea of embracing diversity is introduced, thereby setting the stage for the rest of the volume and the opening eyes series. In chapter two, Professor Maximus Munahengsefortu focuses on visual impairment in the global south in providing background and context to the research that was undertaken in preparation of this book publication. In addition to describing the incidence and nature of visual impairment in South Africa, inclusive education, visual impairment, pedagogy and teaching strategies are introduced as considerations when working in this field. Professor Juan Borman of the Centre for Augmentative and Alternative Communication at the University of Pretoria builds on this discussion in Chapter 3 with a focus on human rights. She continues the discussion on contemporary views on disability and provides insight into different disability models, amongst others, the human rights model. In terms of human rights issues, Borman refers to international, regional and national legislation, and then focuses her discussion on the implementation of current legislation in South Africa. She concludes the chapter with some practical examples of supporting the human rights of people with visual impairment. Chapter four, titled visual, titled visual Impairment and the Inclusive Education Policy, builds on the previous chapters and continues the discussion on inclusive education and human and children's rights issues. Here, Ms. Judith Ferreira Prevost, who was previously affiliated with the Faculty of Education at the University of Pretoria, unpacks inclusive education policy and implementation of this policy in more detail, specifically referring to the South African context, yet also considering the broader global audience who may benefit from this publication. The next four chapters of the volume focus on the contextualization of support for learners with visual impairment. First, Professor Borman of the University of Pretoria and Mrs. Anne Hurt, private practitioner and affiliate of the Department of Educational Psychology at the University of Pretoria, unpack support to learners who are multiply impaired with a visual impairment. In proposing a team approach, they include discussions on assessment, parent support, education, and practical guidelines for the teachers of these learners. Next, in Chapter 6, Dr. Mai Salamanis focuses on the enablement of teachers who work with learners who are visually impaired. For this purpose, she discusses the educational needs of learners with visual impairment, the challenges typically experienced by teachers who work with these learners, the related implications, and then more importantly, finding solutions to the challenges the teachers may face. In Chapter 7, Mrs. Anne Hurd discusses the value of the orientation and mobility profession in the lives of learners and teachers. She builds on the discussion of blindness, low vision and visual impairment, foregrounds the importance of collaboration between the orientation and mobility practitioner and the teacher, and then provides implications and practical guidelines for classroom practice. In the last chapter of this second section of the volume, Dr. Ineke Gravenstein, associated with the Centre for Augmentative and Alternative Communication at the University of Pretoria, focuses on higher order emotion identification and the development of emotional competence by children with visual impairment. In her discussion, she specifically attends to the development of emotions in learners, higher order emotion identification as an emotional competency skill, the effect of visual impairment on emotional development, 
and related implications for the classroom. In the third and final section of this volume, emphasis is placed on the importance of collaborative partnerships, families, and successful transition from school to the world of work. First, Mrs. Karin Boota of the University of Pretoria focuses on the promotion of a collaborative partnership approach to support the families of learners with visual impairment in chapter nine. More specifically, she explains the benefits of successful school community family partnerships with families of learners with visual impairment and provides practical steps for building such partnerships. She concludes the chapter with some practical guidelines for teachers on how to form and maintain effective school family community partnerships. In further elaboration, Professor Boitumelu Diala of the University of Johannesburg deepens the discussion on the role of the family in the life of a learner with visual impairment in chapter 10. She foregrounds the bioecological theoretical framework as basis for understanding family support and then contemplates support to learners with visual impairment on the micro, meso, exo and macro systems levels. In chapter 11, Professor Maximus of Fortu discusses transition, entrepreneurship and decent work within the context of visual impairment. In his discussion, he includes aspects of career development, transition education, self-determination and entrepreneurship in support of empowerment. The final chapter of this volume, chapter 12, aligns with the previous chapter with a specific focus on transition from school to tertiary education for the visually impaired. In this chapter, Mrs. Anne Hurd uses case studies of learners and students with visual impairment to enrich her discussion and then concludes with some implications, guidelines and recommendations for teachers who work in this field. As stated at the start of this presentation, the Opening Eyes series may be of value to theorists, practitioners and scholars in the fields of visual impairment, guiding both further research and practice, leading to a positive effect in the lives of learners who are visually impaired. We trust that this first volume in the Opening Eyes series will add insight to your understanding of this phenomenon, allowing you to be able to plan and do how to work and support learners with visual impairment and how to make a difference in the lives of these learners and opening their and others' eyes to the possibilities of their optimal functioning despite their disability. Thank you for listening and enjoy the publication.